Welcome to the online proctored testing training brought to you by Ivy Tech Community College, Lafayette Region. Today we're going to cover a few different topics including why do we have proctored tests, who, what, and where are acceptable test proctors, and we'll also discuss what are the students' responsibilities and what are our responsibilities as instructors. The first question is, why do we have proctored tests? There are two main reasons why we have proctored tests. The first is to ensure academic integrity. If there are specific standards that the students need to follow while taking an exam, the best way to ensure that the students follow those standards is to have that exam proctored. For example, in an online class, if we want to make sure that the students do not use their textbook on the final exam, we can have that exam proctored and the test proctor can monitor the student's participation in the exam to make sure that they meet all of the standards. The other reason why we have proctored tests is for transferability to other institutions. Some other academic institutions will not accept Ivy Tech courses for transfer credit unless the exams in those courses are proctored. Now that we understand why we have proctored tests, who may serve as a test proctor? Obviously, any Ivy Tech testing center is an acceptable test proctor, but the students also have many other options for test proctoring. For example, a licensed K-12 teacher may serve as a test proctor. The students may also go to their local public library or a local learning center, for example, a commercial learning center, or if the student is in the military, the military learning centers are also acceptable test proctors. In addition to that, the students may also go to other academic institutions that may be in their community and they may serve as test proctors. If the student has a disability for which they receive accommodations, their disability support services coordinators may also serve as a test proctor. Who cannot serve as a test proctor? Because the goal of proctored testing is to ensure academic integrity, it is very important that the test proctor not have a vested interest in the performance of that student on that particular exam. Therefore, family members and friends are not acceptable test proctors. In the Lafayette region, the DE coordinators are also not acceptable test proctors. However, in other Ivy Tech regions, the DE coordinators may also operate their campus testing center, so those DE coordinators are acceptable test proctors. There are two types of fees associated with testing. The first is the test fee, and the second is the proctor fee. Not all tests have a testing fee. However, if the students are required to take some sort of commercial certification test for their course, those tests generally have some sort of fee involved. The proctor fee is separate and is charged by the institution or individual who is providing those proctoring services. An Ivy Tech testing center will not charge a proctor fee as long as the student is enrolled in Ivy Tech. Also, other academic institutions where the student is enrolled will not generally charge a fee to the student to provide proctoring services. Some proctors generally do charge a fee. Those include learning centers, commercial learning centers, or Public libraries also generally have a fee associated with providing proctor services. When you receive the proctor information from your student, it may not be immediately obvious whether that proctor is acceptable or not. So what do you do at that point? You have two different options. You can either contact the proctor on your own to get more information on that proctor in their location, or you may contact your local DE coordinators and they can pursue that information for you. It is not unusual to get proctor information that is outside of what you might expect. 
particularly if the student is outside of the state of Indiana or even outside of the United States, you may get proctor information that is not familiar to you. What are the student's responsibilities with test proctoring? First and foremost, the students are responsible for providing you with their proctor information. It is very important to get this information from the students as early in the semester as possible. Many instructors will include a question in the syllabus quiz or an assignment during the first week of the course that prompts the students to provide them with their proctor information. It is also important that the students provide you with documentation of any disabilities for which they need accommodations. It is important to remember as the instructor that you are not required to honor disability accommodations without documentation of those disabilities from their disability support services coordinator. It is also important to know that once the student has provided you with accommodation documentation, you are only required to honor that documentation and those accommodations after the student provides you with that documentation. The accommodations are not retroactive. So if the student waits until after the midterm exam to provide you with accommodation documentation, you are required only to provide the student with those accommodations from that point in the semester forward. It is also the student's responsibility to inform you if they need to make alternative arrangements to take a proctored test. For example, if the student moves halfway through the semester and would like to change their test proctor, it's the student's responsibility to communicate with that with you in a timely fashion. As instructors, what are our responsibility for proctored tests? Again, first and foremost, it is our responsibility to gather the proctor information from the students, and it is definitely advisable to do this as early in the semester as possible to make sure that you have time to confirm that all of the proctors that the students have chosen are acceptable. As we're confirming whether the chosen proctors are acceptable, if they've chosen an Ivy Tech testing center, that's very simple. Go to the Ivy Tech website at ivytech.edu slash distance slash testing dash centers dot html and that site provides you with a list of all of the testing centers in the state of Indiana. Also, if the student provides you with a proctor that is outside Ivy Tech, you must make sure that the emails that they provided you are business emails. For example, an ivytech.edu or whatever school.k12.in.us, those are acceptable email addresses. It is not acceptable for the student to provide you with a personal email such as a yahoo.com or a gmail.com address. The address must be a business email. Our next responsibility, and one of the most important responsibilities that we have as instructors, is to complete the proctor form completely and correctly. Some of the things on the proctor form include the originating site, and that is the course that the student is enrolled in, and also the testing site, which is the student's chosen proctor location, followed by all of the exam information. And the exam information includes student information, instructor information, any information that the proctor needs to know about the test. That will also include how the exam will be presented, whether that's on Blackboard or whether that's on a third-party site. It will include any of the materials and equipment that the students will need in order to complete the test. And also you can specify on this form the materials that the student is allowed to bring with them to the test. If you want any of the testing materials to be returned to you by the test proctor, you can specify that on the proctor form as well. Now one of the most complicated situations with the proctor form is how it will be received by the test proctor. I highly recommend saving your proctor form as a PDF file. That ensures that when the proctor receives the form, it will display for the proctor exactly as it displayed for you before you sent it. And that can help you to ensure that the proctor gets all of the information that you intend for them to receive. If you have Office 2007 or newer, you can do a file save as and save your document as a PDF file. 
If you have some other sort of word processing program, there are many free downloadable programs that allow you to create a PDF file from any sort of word processing document. Once you've completed the proctor form and saved it as a PDF, you must send that form to the proctor yourself. The proctors cannot accept proctor forms from the students. There are a maximum number of proctored tests that you are allowed to offer in a course. For the program level courses, which is the 100 and 200 level courses, you are allowed to offer a maximum of two proctored tests. For ASA courses, which is the zero level courses such as Math 050, you are permitted to require a maximum of four proctored tests. The Lafayette Assessment Center has stringent requirements. We highly recommend that instructors meet the requirements for the Lafayette Testing Center and that generally allows them to meet the requirements for any other testing center as well. The first requirement that the Assessment Center has is that an individual proctor form must be filled out for each student. If the student is taking the test at one of the Lafayette Region Testing Centers, these are the addresses that you will need to send that proctor form to. Distance testing dash whatever town that testing center is in, whether it's Lafayette, Crawfordsville, or Monticello campuses, at lists.ivytech.edu. Obviously, if the student has opted to take their test at another Ivy Tech region or an outside test proctor location, those addresses will be different. The form must be received by the testing center before students can make an appointment, and the students must make an appointment before they can take an exam at the assessment center. So it's very important to get the forms to the Assessment Center in a timely fashion. The Assessment Center does require 24 hours advance notice for processing before they will make a test appointment for the student. So if the student would like to take the test on Tuesday afternoon, you'll need to have the proctor form to the Assessment Center by Monday morning. Any changes that need to be made to the proctor form must be done in writing. I highly recommend if you'd like to make a change to a proctor form to create a new form, enter all of the corrections, and send that corrected proctor form to the assessment center. It is important to note that at the Lafayette Assessment Center, they will not proctor makeup tests during finals week. They will only proctor final exams. Other proctor locations may be different, so if a student needs to take a makeup test during finals week, they'll need to do that at another proctor location. The last thing that we're going to talk about is dishonesty reporting. The assessment center will not stop any dishonest behavior that they may observe while proctoring a test, but they will complete an academic dishonesty report, which they will then give to you as the instructor. Once you receive that report from the assessment center, it is your responsibility to act upon that report. Thank you very much for attending this training session. Any questions that you have may be directed to your local distance education coordinators or to the assessment center using the contact information provided.